Hello YouTube and welcome back into another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're going to be doing another armor video. And today's going to be the top 5 knight armors and where to find them. So basically in this list, because obviously you can wear any armor as a knight class, we're going to be going through the armors that uh, look like a medieval western European knight would actually wear, or at least somewhat close, so they're not off by a ton. And they also fit the playstyle of the knight class in the game. So uh, not every suit of heavy armor is going to be applicable for this list. I kind of wanted them to actually look like something that a medieval knight might wear during the medieval period. So appearance is going to play a part, but mostly they're going to be ranked by stats. So uh, we're going to start it off with number five, the Bloodhound Knight set, which you can see I am wearing here. Pretty cool looking in my opinion. As far as components, this one's made up of the Bloodhound Knight Helm, the Bloodhound Knight Armor, the Bloodhound Knight Gauntlets, and the Bloodhound Knight Greaves. As far as stats on this one go, for damage negation we have 25.7, Strike 23.5, Slash 29, Pierce 27.8, Magic 19.5, Fire of 21.2, Lightning of 14.5, and Holy of 21.2, giving it an overall average damage negation of 22.8. For resistances, we have Immunity of 74, Robustness of 115, Focus of 53, Vitality of 53, and actually a poise of 28. Not the highest poise, it's one of the reasons it took a low spot on this list, because as far as heavy medium or even heavy armor goes, uh, 28 isn't the best poise in the world, but it is for a mobile build, and it doesn't weigh very much, because this suit only weighs 24.2 pounds, or whatever the unit of measurement in this game is. So, pretty great suit stat-wise, and I think it looks very cool. As far as getting the suit goes, you're going to have to make your way up to the Altus Plateau region, and then go up towards Mount Gelmir, and you're going to find it here in the Gelmir Hero's Grave. And so I'm just going to try to run through, I'll kind of zip through it to show you the path to get there. But basically you're going to be looking for it after defeating a Bloodhound Knight in this dungeon who is protecting another suit of armor that you can get down here, which is the Gelmir Knight set. Once you've killed that Bloodhound Knight, you can loot it off his body. So I'm just going to try to zip to him. Alright, so once you've gotten down that ladder, you're going to want to take out this Bloodhound Knight. Now there's not going to be any great way to sneak up on him, but he is just a regular enemy type, so you'll be able to take him out. Of course, I hate the Bloodhound Knights because of the way they jump around, but come on, come on. There we go. Now we got him. So once you've defeated him, you'll be able to loot the entire set off him. So you can see we got the full set into our inventory. While you're down here, you might as well also get the Gelmir Knight armor. And that is how you get this set. So pretty great looking set, pretty decent stats, and not terribly difficult to get. It is kind of annoying getting past the uh, chariots, but once you do, you can grab it. So that is number five, the Bloodhound Knight set. All right, so at number four, we have the Knight set, which quite possibly might be my overall favorite looking suit of armor in the game, just for any specific class I think it looks the best and that's probably because it looks the most like an actual set of medieval plate armor uh, and it's also pretty easy to get so this one is uh you know suitable for most of the game but you can actually get it pretty close to the beginning as far as components it's made up of the knight helm the knight armor the knight gauntlets and the knight greaves so that makes pretty good sense as far as stats on this one go for damage negation we have 28.5 for physical strike of 29.3 slash of 29.3 pierce of 29.3 magic of 22.8 fire of 22.8 lightning of 20.6 and holy of 19, giving it an average damage negation of 25.2, so a decent step above the Bloodhound set. For resistance, we have immunity of 66, robustness of 75, focus of 43, vitality of 43, and it has a poise of 40, so significantly better poise than the Bloodhound Knight set. So like I said, this one is going to perform pretty much better in most circumstances, just in a lot of ways. And it only weighs 25.3, so it's actually not that much heavier than the Bloodhound set. So great suit of armor stat-wise, I think it looks great, it performs great in combat, really keeps you safe. Obviously it's going to pair quite well with a knight build because that's what it's made for and uh, named after. Plus it looks the best. So as far as getting the suit goes, it's actually very easy. You have to make your way through Stormvale Castle and then rest here at the lake facing cliffs and your maiden will then tell you, hey, by the way, I could take you to the round table hold and then you get to the round table hold. Once you get to the round table hold, the very first thing you can do is to head over into the left side here and then go towards the twin husk maidens, the twin maiden husks or whatever they're called, and you'll be able to purchase this suit of armor 
from them. See, it's all available for purchase here, as well as several other weapons and other useful things. So very easy to get early in the game. You just buy it. It's extremely useful. In my first playthrough, I used this suit of armor just because I liked the way it looked for almost the entire story. I swapped out of it every once in a while, but the rest of the time, I basically just wore this suit of armor because like I said, I just think it looks the best. So that's the knight set. It has great stats and is great looking. But that's number four, let's move on to number three. All right, and so for our number three set, we have the Banished Knight set. And now this one is also quite excellent as far as trying to look realistic goes. There's only a few problems with it. For one thing, I don't like any of the suits that have the ridiculously long hair coming out of them. I can't stand that. So I wish that was something we could take off. Uh, the Dragon Crest on top of the helmet wouldn't be ridiculous for tournament armor, but for combat armor, it would be probably not very common. Uh, other than that, the rest of the armor actually isn't bad. This is a pretty comprehensive suit of plate armor that looks pretty good. Uh, as far as components, for this one go, we have the Banished Knight Helm, the Banished Knight Armor, the Banished Knight Gauntlets, and the Banished Knight Greaves. As far as stats are concerned on this thing, for damage negation, we have a Physical of 39.3, Strike of 34.5, Slash of 41.5, Pierce of 40, Magic of 29, Fire of 29.2, a Lightning of 28, and Holy of 28.5, giving it an average damage negation of 33.5, so a pretty good step above the Knight set. As far as Poise goes, we've got a Poise of 56, so another good jump over the Knight set. Uh, for other resistances, Immunity of 140 robustness of 208, focus of 124, and vitality of 127. And all of that while only weighing 41.6 pounds. So this will still result in most builds having a medium weight load. So it's got actually really, really good defensive stats considering it's pretty light. I would say this is definitely much lighter than the uh, stats would dictate on a suit of armor, typically speaking. So pretty great suit of armor that I know a lot of people, once they'll get it, they'll use it for the entire game. As far as where you get this, uh, there's it's a random drop from Banished Knights. And you'll find Banished Knights all over the map, but the best concentrations are going to be over here in Stormvale Castle. And uh, basically, if I'm doing over to it over here, I'll spawn in the lift side chamber and then just go down the steps until I run into the Banished Knights, kill them, and just keep re rinsing and repeating. But I find that the better place to do it is over here in the Cathedral of the Dragon Communion in Kaelid, because it's just much quicker to where you spawn. And uh, with any enemy type like this, where you're trying to grind for a specific uh, weapon or armor or anything like that, you're going to want to just make sure your arcane is nice and high because the higher your arcane is, the more likely they are to drop the thing that you're looking for. And also just do it as quick as possible. Keep spawning back in and killing them over and over again. Uh, and you'll be able to get a number of things, including this shield, which is the best medium shield in the game. There's a couple different varieties of helmets that you can get and uh, also the rest of these armor pieces. So unfortunately, you do have to grind for it, but it's well worth it because this suit of armor is excellent. So that's number three, the Banished Knight set. Let's move on to number two. All right, and so for the number two spot, our runner up we have the scaled set which honestly in my uh, you know how I said for the night set in my first playthrough I used the night set almost all the way through when I switched it off it was for the scaled set because this one does have significantly better stats but also still looks pretty good now obviously it's got some problems because we've got some sort of a I guess scales would be what I would assume is in there I'm sure it says in the item description uh, but it does kind of break up the otherwise pretty good uniform look of this outfit and the only other problem being that the helmet I believe is what's called a burgeonette style helmet, which would have been significantly later than the rest of this armor, at least stylistically speaking. Then again, medieval weapons are kind of my specialty, not so much armor, so maybe I'm wrong about that. But it does look a little off on this suit of armor. Other than that, though, very cool looking and excellent stats. So this suit of armor is made up of the scaled helm, the scaled armor, the scaled gauntlets, and the scaled greaves. As far as stats on this one go, for damage negation, we've got a physical negation of 36.7, strike of 31.5, slash of 38.3, pierce of 36. .7, magic of 28.9, fire of 30, lightning of 27.9, and a holy of 28.9, giving it an average damage negation of 32.4. So, not too bad. Uh, as far as poise goes, this one has poise of 58, so slightly higher than the Banished Knight set, uh, and that is going to be one of the most important stats in combat, so that's why I placed it above the Banished Knight set. As far as other resistances, we have an immunity of 135, robustness of 197, focus of 90, vitality of 91, and uh, a weight of 38. So, pretty Pretty light considering how good the stats are. It's uh so like I said when you're comparing the Banished Knight and the scaled set, uh, this one is slightly lighter but has slightly higher.
higher poise. So uh, I think it makes a better suit of armor. As far as getting the set goes, it's medium difficulty, I guess I would say. It just takes time, basically. Because you're going to need to get to Volcano Manor and do the first Volcano Manor mission to get the suit of armor. So if you just want to get the quick rundown on how to do that, you're going to want to make your way to Liernia, and this is just the quickest way to do what I'm saying. Uh, it's not the only way to get up there, but you meet a little maiden right here. She'll ask you to get her necklace from Boyle Prawn Shack. You go over here and get it for her, bring it back to her. Then she'll give you an invitation to Volcano Manor. Then the quickest way to get to Volcano Manor, quickest and probably easiest, is to take the Grand Lift of Dectus. So you just follow the road up, and you take the Grand Lift, Lift of Dectus up, and talk to her, and she will bring you to the Volcano Manor. Otherwise, you're going to have to make your way there a couple different ways. If you don't want to take the Grand Lift of Dectus, or you haven't got the medallion halves yet, then you can go up through over here and take the Runestrun Precipice way to get up into the Altus Plateau. And then you can walk your way up and around, go through up here by where there's a pretty difficult boss fight, and walk your way into Volcano Manor. Or you can go down way beneath Raya Lucaria and let the Abductor Virgin there kill you, and then you'll wake up over here in the uh, Subterranean Inquisition Chamber, and then you can fight your way out and walk your way up into Volcano Manor. Once you've gotten in there, introduce yourself to the person in charge, she'll tell you what's going on, you go to the drawing room, you'll be able to get a letter, which will give you a mission, and it will be to go kill Old Knight Ishtvan, who you will find over here in Limgrave, right where I'm standing, in fact, like right over here. And once you've killed Old Knight Ishtvan, you will get this suit of armor. It will just appear in your inventory. So that is how you get the scaled set, and like I said, it's one of my favorite looking ones, and it's also one of the best ones stat-wise in the game. So definitely worth getting. But that's number two. Let's move on to number one. All right, and so for our number one best uh, knight set in the game, we have the Tree Sentinel set, and despite not having the name knight in it or in the description, or anything it is pretty intense and this one made the list because honestly i mean the helmet is a little bit more eccentric looking but it's not totally outside of the realm of what was common in the late medieval period as far as style goes like i said obviously it's way more artistic and very specific looking but other than that uh this suit is pretty great now it looks pretty bulky and it makes the metal look a little bit too thick but it does look a lot like a comprehensive suit of 16th to 17th century heavy plate armor honestly i really like it and it's it's got a gilded look, which is very fancy, but again, not totally uncommon. So so it's a great, great suit of armor for a knight build in Elden Ring. As far as items that make up this one, we have the Tree Sentinel Helm, the Tree Sentinel Armor, the Tree Sentinel Gauntlets, and the Tree Sentinel Greaves. As far as stats on this one go, we have a damage negation for physical of 41, strike of 32.7, slash of 41, pierce of 38.3, Magic of 28.2, Fire of 37.5, Lightning of 27.4, and a Holy of 30.7, giving it an average uh, damage negation of 34.6. Uh, and of course, making it not only the best one on this list, but one of the best suits of heavy armor in the game. As far as poise, we have a poise of 60, so a uh, obviously the highest one on this list, and one of the highest suits of, uh, suits of armor for poise in the game. For other resistances, we have an immunity of 159, robustness of 215, focus of 100, vitality of 110, and a weight of 45. So not even that much heavier than the other suits on this list. So like I said, I think it stands out a lot and uh, is a great suit of armor. As far as getting this one, that's where we run into a snag because it's kind of a pain to get. You're going to have to make your way to the Altus Plateau and around the Lindell capital. And instead of going in to the capital like you would through here on the rampart, you're going to want to go down and underneath that bridge and come to the Oriza Hero Grave. And then uh, it's a very specific way to do it. So there's a chariot puzzle in here. Basically, you have to find out how to destroy the chariots, and when you do, you'll get this armor. The method is basically going to be you have to get through to a certain point and raise up one of those flamethrower towers, which will direct a light towards the chariots. And when that light goes there, the chariots will no longer pass through each other, and they will run into each other and be destroyed. So I'm just going to try to kind of zip through it and uh, fast forward to show you at least how to get to the point where you can do it, but we'll, we'll see if I'm able to do it in, in, in one try. So let's just go through. Once you've gotten down past the two chariots up there and this chariot right here, this is your only safe spot. So you gotta look for that body leaning off the edge there and you have to align yourself with it and drop down onto a beam. So it's probably the hardest part out of all this because you have to do that while not getting killed by these chariots. So you go out right after him. Like I said, align yourself and drop down. And now you just drop down until you get 
down to one of those bottom beams where they're kind of parallel with each other. So it's just take your time and be careful. Once you get down to the parallel beams, you just go until you get across, and just like I said, make sure you're careful not to fall off. Then you're going to want to climb up the ladder down at the end. So once you've gotten up and around that corner, we're going to go in here, and we're going to hit this thing, raising it up. And so then you can either keep going through, or you can just fast travel back to the beginning. And so once you've raised that pillar up, you're just going to wait until the flame stops, and then you're going to have to run out. Try not to get hit by that thing, because if you do, you'll die, which sucks. But that's okay, because now we should fast travel back to the beginning um, of the dungeon, and we should be able to complete it for the armor. All right, so hopefully, if I'm correct about the way this goes, we'll be able to just go to the room with the three chariots, and they should collide with each other now. I wasn't trying to die there, but it works. Get up and around. And now these chariots in this room... Yeah, see, that ring wasn't there before. So now they should collide. See? And that is how you get it. So you get the Ash of War for Holy Ground, the Tree Sentinel Helm, Armor, Gauntlets, and Greaves. So, like I said, I wasn't trying to die there, but basically once you've raised up that pillar, all you need to do is get back to the beginning, and you'll be able to come down in here. The chariots will collide, and you will get the armor. So, pretty stupid uh, process for getting armor, but once you get it, it is really, really good. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.